Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and on today's episode, we have two big surprises for you, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, wall to wall sunshine in Wales. That is a surprise. What's going on there? And number two is a big surprise for Tim. So let's get into it. Now, I've been a VW and Porsche fanatic all of my car life, but Tim there has always been into his British cars. He's had an MG Midget, uh, he's got a Lotus Elise. Um, I've had a TVR. That brown TVR, yeah. yeah Austin and Healy. He's got an Austin Healy. But I had some fantastic news on Friday night in the pub, and that is, after 30 years of trying to persuade him to go German, He's finally going there. He's selling his Austin Healey. And by the way, click on the link above if you want to see that in an episode where we did it um, against an MG Midget. He's finally selling that beautiful Austin Healey and he's going to get a Porsche 912. Yes. So this episode is going to be all about Porsches. And what Tim's got to do today is, first of all, he's got to choose which Porsche we're going to go out in today. Right, come on, Tim, you're going to have to come into the scene here now. So just to explain what I've done before Tim arrived, I took two classic Porsches, and they are beautiful classic Porsches, out of the workshop, put the covers on, and today Tim's going to choose which one we're going to use to rag over the mountain roads to the coast for an ice cream. Mm, sounds good. So are you ready? I'm ready, yeah. So which one are you going to choose? I, the one thing I can tell you is you can't go wrong. Which one's got the most leg room? I'm not saying anything, mate. All right, okay. Go on. Which one so are you going to choose? I'm not going to be disappointed with either of these. Nope. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Every, right, I'm going to go for this one because it's the closest. Everyone's so a winner, as they say in the yeah. uh, in the fair, mate. <laughs> You're going to choose this one, yeah? Right, yeah, let's go with this. Go on in, ready? Oh, good, it's blue. <laughs> it's a great colour. That's a 911. It is indeed. It's a 911. It's looking good. Oh, is that the RS duck spoiler? Is that what that's duck called? Ducktail spoiler from a 1973 RS. So what this is, is a 1973 RS replica uh, with a Tesla drivetrain in the back. So you couldn't have picked a you know, better car, I think. Time for an ice cream. All right, ready? Now, before we go, I want to do the classic bullseye. Look what you would have won. <laughs> you want to have it's a not little... a speedboat, is it? It's not a speedboat. Do you want to have a little bit of a peek? Because we'll say this to an, for another episode. There you oh, go. A little, little sneak peek. Yeah. So, yeah. as I say, you couldn't have gone wrong today. No. No. But before it starts clouding over and raining, I think we need to put this back in the workshop and get going in this. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Now, we've just got onto the mountain roads now. And we'll watch Tim's face change now as I start to put like, this through its paces. Is it time to grab the seat? Oh yeah. This is where this car really comes alive. Because right. the power out of the corners and the handling is just on another level. <laughs> it is on another level. <laughs> Can we go down to the, the, the level below, please? No! <laughs> it's just too much fun. That's phenomenal for a... Was it 1973 car, this? No, this is actually a 1980 car. It's been backdated to look like a 1973 right. RS. But it's got our standard 911 conversion setup in, which moves the weight distribution a little bit further forward, which makes the handling like that. That was impressive, wasn't it? It's phenomenal. Really good. You wouldn't get that in a petrol pad 911. I'll tell you near that right now. There's loads of cars out today. There's a Caterham event going on around here, and those are good handling cars. And also loads of Porsches. We've seen what, about four or five Porsches yeah, going the other way. Right. But I've driven a number of very nicely set up classic Porsche 911s, and a good sorted 911 handles beautifully. It's like a, you know, a sharp knife as, as far as accuracy is concerned. But this is on another level again. I would say this is, more like a laser-guided scalpel as far as accuracy of the way you want to place it on the road, throw it into corners it has no right to go around at that speed, like that, but you can change direction so easily with this. 
and that's because the suspension is really sorted but also that weight distribution really helps it get around oh, quarters like that now we've pulled over halfway along this mountain road from Planet Lois over to Machantleth just to give you a little bit of a tour around this car. And we've pulled over in a place called Delive, which believe it or not, back in the Industrial Revolution, had 2,000 people living here. It was a big mining town, uh, but no more. But less of history, more on the car. So this car was built for a couple of really nice guys called Mark and Charlie. Charlie uh, owns a uh, company, and we'll put a link in the description, who's a poor specialist. So when he built this car and set it up, Oh my God, did he set it up. It is a beautiful car to drive. But on the conversion side of things, what we've got is a standard 911 conversion. It's evolved a little bit since then, but not by a great amount. It's got the performance setup in this, so it's got the large Tesla drive unit underneath, half its battery pack in the engine bay here, and then half in the boot. And I think it's something like a 52, 54 kilowatt hour battery pack. Energy density's moved on now, and I think we're up to around about 62, 63 kilowatt hour battery packs for our 911 kits now. Uh, so you've got your charger up there. You've got a header tank here for the motor. It's a little bit warm because we've had some fun getting here already. And then in the front is the other battery pack. But on the car itself, this is actually a 1980 911 that's been backdated to look like that iconic 1973 RS. Now, if we have a look in the front, you can see the other half of the battery pack. And as I say, this has evolved a little bit since uh, this conversion was done uh, with our present kits, but not by a huge amount. For instance, that, that heater box over there, uh, that's gone. So you've got a bit more luggage space there. Um, you've, got the air, you've got air conditioning in this car as well, so the AC compressor here is now mounted underneath the wing out of the way, and the DC to DC converter here, which takes that 400 volts of the battery pack to the 12 volts to charge up the 12 volt battery, that's now part of the charger at the back. So as some of these bits and pieces are out of here, and there's a little bit more space in the front, but really it's fairly similar. But this is the critical bit that gives it that better handling than the original air-cooled 911 because that puts a little bit more weight over the front axle, which is no bad thing in a tail dragger like a 911. Now, another thing to mention while I'm around the front is I particularly like the 1973 911 RS recreation because it gives us a place to put the battery cooling radiator, because that's what this is here. This used to be the oil cooler on the RS, but you know, there's precious little places on an air cooled car like a 911 and a Beetle, for instance, to put a radiator, whether that's the radiator for the motor and inverter or the battery. But here, spot on. And the other thing I should mention as well is we've got some pretty choice brakes as well. So, Charlie over at William Francis has put on Tuttle Porsche disc brake upgrades all around as well. So we've got Tuttle brake disc conversion on the front and the rear, and it really does brake well, especially with the regen helping out at the back as well. So this um, 911 has got the performance, large performance Tesla drive unit in, yeah? <laughs> Have you not noticed? <laughs> And the, the 912 that we tested a few months back, which is obviously the 911 shape, that had got a small Tesla drive unit in. Yeah. Now that still had loads and loads of power. Oh yeah. So how, how is this comparing? Because that had loads of power, it had more than enough power with a small unit. This has got a much bigger Tesla motor. This must be another level. It is. I mean, it, it's. but you see that in the 911 range now. You've got a base model 911, which is fast enough by any yeah. stretch but then it goes all the way up to like a, a 911 RS yeah. which is a yeah a hell of a road weapon yeah. and that's what this is if you're going to do a homage to the 1973 911 RS you've got to go with the performance motor and this has definitely got some poke as you've already seen So you know, you were talking 
that 912 before, the, yeah. the Tesla powered one, yeah, the yeah. small Tesla driving it. Well, I'll give you a flavour to compare what the large Tesla driving in this is like. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Right, you ready? Yeah, I'll grab the seat. Here we go. That's quick, isn't it? Wow, that's quick, that's quick enough. That's quick enough. Yeah. Yeah, but you can only get away with a large desert driving unit in the back of a 911 if you've got the wider arches, or you can put those wider tyres in. That 912, beautiful car it was. You, there's no point in putting a large desert drive unit in the back of that. You just wouldn't get the power down. No, they only had skinny tyres, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. So a narrow body um, 911 or 912, small Tesla drive unit is more than enough. But if you really have the ability to put those wider tyres on the rear. Large tether driving it. You can't go wrong. No. <laughs> right, we've arrived. We've got um, oh, 50% left in the tank. We only started with just over 75%. Which is not bad. How, how long we've we been? It's a good couple of hours of fun we've had. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll figure out how this charger works. Hang on. Right on the beach car park, there's four chargers here. Oh yeah. So what have we got to do? Uh, card payment. Start charge. Tap card. Processing. Which one is it? Small one. Uh, that one there, master. Plug it in. And click start. Sorted. Ice cream time. Got me ice cream. Tim's nearly polished off his as well. But uh, yeah, that was a nice run over, wasn't it, Tim? Lovely drive. You're looking forward to your Porsche now, aren't you? Yeah, it won't quite be as quick as that, though. Uh, no. Well, it will be as nice to look at. Yep. Just need your Austin Healy sold. We'll put a link in the description just in case it's still for sale by the time the video goes out. But, yeah, what a car. I've only been here about 10 minutes. Already had the first. You can't park that there. It's for electric cars, mate. <laughs> but, no. Fantastic car. Really enjoyed it. Um, get around about 160 mile range out of it. But, um, yeah. I think we'll finish off our ice creams here, have a walk on the beach, and then head over the mountain roads. The plug pirates even arrived here as well. I don't know why, these, are, these charges aren't for free, so he's going to blow his whole yearly budget on one charge. But yeah, he's going to join us on the drive back over the mountains now. So on that note, I'm going to finish off my ice cream. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you on the next one.